So about eight years ago today, a colleague gave me this book excerpt called Men of Metal, Eyewitness Accounts of Humanoid Robots that came in Esquire magazine. And so I had a class to plan for, and of course I sat down and read it. Uh, you know, what else are you gonna do? You know, it's about these near-miss traffic accidents that keep happening on rainy nights in Oxford, England. Near-miss because just as things are about to go catastrophic, bright lights show up, strange noises, and suddenly the car is back on the road and safe. And it doesn't happen just to one person, it happens to a bunch of people. This guy starts investigating it, um, a, a journalist, and he's got this great snarky, cynical attitude, but he's talking to people and he's seeing evidence and he starts to get compelled a little bit. He's like wondering, well, maybe there's something to this. There's these weird footprints that he finds, there's a pattern to the incidents, and most tellingly, he finds this car part at one of the accident scenes, a tailpipe from a Mini Cooper, and there were no Mini Coopers involved in these accidents. Hmm, so he's you know, thinking, okay. He investigates and finds out that there's this, this uh, engineer for Mini who has been dabbling in robotics. And this guy has like these you know, weird things happening at his, at his house. He has this very strange website that seems to indicate that he's doing perverse things. Well, the, the leads all go cold and he ends up with this uh, you know, sort of equivocation. I can't say for sure that there are robots, but there might be, hmm. So, after I'm done reading this thing, I have this moment. <laughs> you, you've had these moments, right? I'm like, I'm an English professor, for God's sake. I should know what I've just read. I don't know what this is. What is this thing? Is this real? I don't know what it is. is are these people really doing this? Well, you know, I was raised on the Night Stalker in the X-Files, and so I totally want to believe. I'm like, ooh, this could be cool. He left lots of breadcrumbs, so I did some investigating. I started, like, tapping around with clicking around and things. And what did I find? Well, I found out that there is a book publishing company that seems to be, you know, publishing this stuff. The guy seems like a real person that wrote it. There's a web page for people to report these strange incidents in Oxford. I'm thinking, well, but, but this can't be true, can it? You know, there's a, there's, I don't know if you can see this video. Look, yeah, it's this like robot catching a car. Holy moly, this is two years before YouTube, right? This video, I'm thinking there's gotta be chatter about this. People are gonna talk about this online. Oh yeah, all over the place. All the forums are just buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. It's a hoax, no, it's real, there's a video. Yeah, but the video shadows are wrong. It's like the Zapruder film in JFK or something like that. They're just, they're all over this. Well, the New York Times finally breaks the story. You've, prob you've probably figured it out, right? It's an ad, right? It's like, I'm like Ralphie in a Christmas story. Remember he drove a teen? And he goes, a crummy commercial? Son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, that's my attitude. I'm thinking, oh my God, I wasted all this time like digging, you know, trying to figure this stuff out. Well, it turns out it's a thing called guerrilla advertising. I had no idea that this, this existed. But it's a, you know, it's a word of mouth kind of thing where they rely on people to create something interesting and that it will spread. Well, guerrilla advertising was always, you know, this came about in the 80s and it was always based on this idea of memes, Richard Dawkins' term, right? That uh, cultural uh, cognate to biology's gene. What memes want to do is they want to replicate. They want to go, they want to just reproduce all over the place. And from a meme's eye point of view, it doesn't care if it's a good idea or a bad idea. It just wants to replicate, <laughs> right? So we have keyboard cat here you know, all over the place. Well, so. Malcolm Gladwell is thinking about this um, and talking about the notion of viral spreading in the internet age um, that social media allows to happen to ideas that are sticky for a particular group of people, right? That if it's, a, if it's a thing that is compelling for some reason, it'll spread. And I was thinking, well, business has figured this out, but educators, not so much. What are the memes in education? Well, we've seen this image already tonight, right? You know, there's straight desks, Teacher front and center, students, you know. These are the memes that are compelling in education because they are replicable, right? They're easy to reproduce. In my field writing, holy moly, you know, these five paragraph essays that turn out uniform, crappy pieces of writing, um, they all look the same, but they're all bad. They have great memes, but they're bad teaching. What's wrong with this? So I'm thinking about inquiry. This is what I did when I found the little booklet, right? I went into this process of inquiry. I wanted to figure this thing out. What is this thing? Students have those same kind of WTF moments all the time, but we don't give them an opportunity to figure it out. Inquiry is messy. 
it doesn't have a nice little pattern. It goes all over the place. So our task as educators is to figure out how do we give the good teaching that goes with inquiry way better memes than it has right now. Thank you. <laughs>